There's a club in the premiership window. Tex has been offered a two-year contract because they need a big marking forward like him, they think, to get over the line. I'll just sign his contract for him. He's, look, yeah, I've, I've, said, I've said it so many times. In fact, I said it 12 months ago to the day we were in the same position. The, the club are working through with, with Tex on what that looks like going forward. I know you guys want to talk about it. There's not much more I can give you. The great Texit issue. He's playing great footy, but it's complicated. No doubt about that. Uh, there's three options, really. Adelaide are going to decide to keep him. And does he want to stay? And, for, and if so, under what circumstances? Would the club be prepared to give two years or even three to match the offers coming in? And, and would another club be bold enough to do it instead? And, you know, and the perception of what went through, went through last year is a factor in all this, Matthew Lloyd. Well, he's never played in the Premiership, so if you're Tex Walker, would you be willing to try and get to a club who's in the Premiership window? and play for two years. So it's, I reckon Adelaide offer him one, which is fair enough. He's 32 years of age. But would a club... He want, I don't think he'll stay mix, for one, though, now, will he? But I'm saying, would another club... Would he be tempted to move to Victoria, Are Kane you kidding? You think, you think it would be a decent act after the club, the way they stood up for him last year, mm. yep. the damage he wreaked upon that club. They fought with the AFL as recently as pre-season to try and get him to be able to train and play in pre-season games. They lost that battle. They're going to offer him a one-year deal later this month, almost exactly a year to the date that they did their last one-year deal. And the, and, and I, my understanding is he knows that and he's pretty happy to stay. Well, there's a, just before, I know you'll have some strong views on this. The, there'll be a market on him for two years elsewhere and maybe even three. If you're a motivated no. club... Three if years. If you're a motivated club who's close, you're a forward shorter. Uh, Fremantle feels like one of the many clubs... That could you, be... you don't think it's right to say he actually owes Adelaide in this situation? Uh, I think it's one of the most bizarre player-driven media contract circuses I've seen. <laughs> like, nine months ago... I'm with you there. Nine months ago, the coach was in tears, not guaranteeing whether he'd be there this year, let alone next year. He's 32... Um, I don't see Travis Boak, who's twice as good a player as Taylor Walker, complaining about not getting a contract. Like, come on. Let, let, let's be honest. He, he should be signing a one-year deal as quickly as he possibly can at Adelaide. He owes that club. He's not going to go anywhere. And I find it bizarre at the midway point of the year, his good mate on the radio station that he works at, one week says there's three clubs in the premiership window. The next week says it's a two-year deal at Gold Coast, which we know is incorrect. They're making stuff just up, do I, I, I reckon... Triple, we know, we know, M, we know managers do that stuff all the time. I just think, go back and watch the no, vision. Go back and watch the vision of Matthew Nixon tears, not guaranteeing whether he'd be back this year, let alone next year. He's 32. If, if it's he round, walked it's out on 12. Adelaide after the way they have defended him and tried to help him... I mean, uh, I'm, and I'm not... I don't want to say, put words in his mouth because I, I don't think he'd even consider it. He wouldn't do that. It would be a dreadful thing to do. It, a three-year offer versus a one-year stay does test that, that... You don't even listen to Triple M. I can't believe you're buying all of this. Thinking, well, there, I think there'll be a two-year market for him. I do. I, I think on field there would be. But mate, but... Now, you said player-driven media. I think so. You think well, Tex personally well, is driving this? Well, I think... Um... Is that what you're saying? Well, that's my theory. I don't, I don't know that for a fact, but I would think it's, it's convenient timing. It's a reasonable allegation without any knowledge. Like... No, no, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's an opinion. I come up with opinions every week. It's convenient timing that on his very own radio station, when he's searching for a contract at the midway point of the year, there's two different stories in the space of a week linking him to up to seven or eight clubs. Like, it's, it's, it's it, clearly... It's rubbish. Does Mark um, Rusciuto work for Triple M too? He does. Well, he'd, well, probably, he'd, be, the, he'd, be, the count, he'd be the counter-attack, wouldn't he? He's, he's famous for underpaying players. Well, not, he doesn't believe in big checks for players. So it's going to be a, a, an interesting mm. commercial one for them. They can't really offer him more than one as the incumbent, no. can they? No, they're offering him a one-year deal and that'll happen later this month. The Bulldogs have got... And, by the way, we haven't heard from Tex on the list, so that's, that's no, the he other... Spoke, he spoke last week. He said he wants to stay in Adelaide, but is there a contract on offer? No, not yet.